Thank you so much for gathering us here this morning. What a beautiful, beautiful morning, beautiful rising of the sun and your sky, Lord, and all that you've done for us and your, your handiwork, Lord. I, I just marvel in the scripture when it says when you were creating and the stars also. It wasn't, wasn't much to you and uh, so easy and, and you did it for us. That we can see your beauty and your handiwork and see that you are God. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We praise you this morning. We praise you for the work you're doing individually in each one of us. We praise you for the work you're doing in others. We praise you for the work you're doing in the church. We praise you for the work you did in the grave. We praise you for the work you did on the cross. We praise you for the work you're doing in people's lives, getting victory. We thank you for the testimony of Brother Bernie. Uh, just a delight to our soul as we see people come up out of the muck and the mire and you raise them up and you give them the ring and the robe and the cap. Unbelievable. You did it for all of us. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you for uh, what's going on with uh, kids and school and in a time like this where every time you turn around, people are talking about what they're trying to take away and we get to hear a testimony from a mom about something good going on, getting to watch your kids play. We thank you, Lord. What a, what a great thing that is. We thank you for the prayer meeting on Friday night. Thank you for the men's hearts that were stirred. Thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for the petition of prayers and the tears. And Lord, we thank you for a heart of the, of the church to want to move forward and to and pray, and to, to ask for protection, and to, to ask for favor, and to ask for grace, and to ask for mercy, Lord. We need it. We need it more than ever. Lord, you're sovereign. Lord, you're in control, especially when we get out of the way. Lord, as we have gathered here this morning, we've been set as lively stones. Lord, it's supposed to be vibrant. Lord, we're here with smiles on our face as an opportunity to open your word and to hear songs and to use the sacrifice of our lips and to petition our praises to you and how good you are. And Lord, we're also just a very needy people, very, very needy. We have prayers and specific requests that we just petition to you, Lord, as a, as a child sitting on your lap, as just a dear child, as we come in that, that form of humility. Lord, we're lifting up Brother Joey to you now, and his wife, Tinica, as we know that there's been quite a week for them, and for their family, and uh, their church, and for the extended church family here at the Lighthouse. The Lord, just continue to be with his body, uh, be with the doctors, give them wisdom, did hear a praise report that one of the nurses got to see him, and they said that his room was as bright as they ever seen. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. So continue to be with Tinica, and uh, as she's uh, just waiting for her husband to come home, and again, another praise when she said, you know, my husband would want me nothing more than just to be in church. So Lord, just continue to be with the family. Many unspoken prayer requests, Lord, Brother Kenny's got one, and I'm sure many others have things on their lips and things in their heart and stuff on their mind that they just can't utter out quite yet. Maybe it's just personal into you, so Lord, we just petition our unspoken prayer requests to you. We are praying for Sam, who's not feeling well this morning, and also praying for many, many others, uh, Mrs. Zenny, and uh, just a lot of people that are, are not feeling well, so Lord, just continue to have your hand of comfort on them. Praying for the upcoming leadership. What an exciting time at the Lighthouse. I, mean, I know for me it's only been about a handful of them I've been involved with, but they've been life-changing and heart-changing every single time, and we're looking forward to this year. And so, Lord, we ask for swift feet and strong hands as we get ready for the building. Uh, help us to get the rubbish out of the way, maybe the stuff in our hearts or just clutter that's going on in the busyness of the loudness of life so that we can get focused and steady to get ready to, to sail the ship called the Leadership Conference. So help us, Lord, put wind in our sails so that we can blow forward and, and be a blessing unto the delegates and to the guests and just to our, our, our local family and church here. Brother Dan, grandmother, Eleanor, we're also praying for her, we're praying for uh, Janelle in, in Dallas. Just a lot, of, a lot of infirmity, Lord. But you are God. Amen. You have a plan. Through all these things, your scripture tells us that you work all things for the good. 
I don't know if we truly understand that this side of eternity, but your word says it, so we believe it. So Lord, be with us this morning. Go before us. Help us as we talk about authority of the believer. Be with the, the message giver for the morning message. Be with their heart right now. Clear out whatever needs clearing out so that they can be used of God by you, Lord, to administer your word to us so that we can change and be different people when we leave this property today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and stand together. Turn to page 29 in your hymnals. At the cross, at the cross. That was a great prayer for my great Lord. Page 29 at the cross. Here we go on the first. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day on the last. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We're supposed to shake hands. Sorry, I got excited. Let's go ahead. Shake hands. Amen. It's a little good day, brother. Good to see you. And let's sing on the last at the cross. Here we go. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Amen. Grace singing, you may be seated. All right. Good morning again. Good morning again. Well, we are back into the authority of the believer after the holiday, and then Brother Dan got going back in it last week. Yeah, amen. It's good to be back into our, our, uh, our book. For those of you that are new to the class, we're going to be heading into chapter four, but we always try to do a little bit of a recap. Oh, I do have some in my wife's tongue. I have some now. Oh, by the way, we have a clipboard over there. Um, uh, just passing around for anybody that would like to help out with the Sunday school with uh, the setting up or bringing of things, uh, please see my wife. We're going to pass the clipboard around a little bit for next month. And then, sorry, the other announcement is next Sunday, we are going to be having another fundraiser to get ready for the leadership conference. There's rumors of shrimp tacos. There's rumors of all kinds of stuff. So uh, if anybody would like to be a part of that or helping out with that, please see me. Uh, maybe help serving. Uh, we are looking for cookies. We're looking for cookies. We're going to serve some cookies and... Uh, Afterwards, there's a little bit of a, a delight. Yeah, Trini's going to hook it up. 
Okay, now back to back to spiritual things, if you can here. <laughs> segue here right back. Okay, so we are in the authority of the believer, the authority of the believer. And uh, we are starting into chapter 4, chapter 4. For those of you that maybe missed chapters 1, 2, and 3, it's, uh, we do have, a, I don't think we have any more books left, but if you are interested in getting a book to get caught up to where we're at, in the in the in the in the book you can or you can come see us and I can always give you a copy of whatever our last lessons or brother Jonathan here has figured out a way which I don't understand this stuff but he has a QR code you can actually scan and it takes you to um, is it you what is, YouTube it takes it to a YouTube yeah. channel where we've actually filmed all of the lessons so far wow. and so that you can go back and I guess he, he posted it back there it's right by the the drinks and stuff back there. There's a QR code, and it'll take you right to our our um, our website thing, our, our our channel, so you can catch up on the last uh, the last ones. Again, I, I'm not explaining this stuff right because I don't really understand all that stuff. But <laughs> my understanding is you can go back and see it, which is a blessing. So if you want to get caught up with where we're at with the authority of the believer, the authority of the believer, we uh, got this thought from Pastor Marvin Smith. He came out and preached a spiritual warfare conference uh, a few months back, I guess now October maybe it was. And uh, it was very, uh, very helpful, very heart-changing to my own personal life. So after uh, praying and, and talking to him about it, uh, we decided to go forward with one of his uh, small little books. It's called The Authority of the Believer. So we are going to be talking today about the location of this authority that we're talking about. But in review, let's go ahead and start with where we kind of went through chapter 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to do this real fast just to kind of get us going. And why is that spelled wrong? I'm so sorry. I thought I changed that. Um, what is authority? It is power. Now, when we talked about authority, we talked about authority in, in, um, in two different ways. We talked about power, and we've also talked about jurisdiction over something, but also to have the strength to overcome. Power is in two different directions here. So uh, we talked about a portion in, in Scripture in Luke, and it talked about having power to overcome, and it had power to have to be able to tread over the serpents. So we not only have this jurisdiction, but we also have the power and authority. Stay with me as I try to give this illustration. Um, we talked about how if a police officer stands in front of a bunch of traffic coming his way on a freeway, little in a blue outfit with a badge, and a big old semi-truck's coming, and he stamps out there and he puts his hand up, all the traffic comes to a screeching halt. Why? Because he has more power? No. The diesel truck that's going to run him over has more power, but he has the authority to stop it. Well, in our own Christian lives, the devil has a lot of power. It's been given to him. But we have the authority bestowed inside of us to be able to put that traffic to a halt. But do we take hold of that authority? We also talked about the source of authority. And I think I have one more misspelled word because I was going too fast. Uh, it's still right in my notes. It's pretty terrible, huh? The source of authority. Uh, our authority was given to us when Christ defeated the grave. When Christ defeated the grave. And praise the Lord. We can tap into that same authority. I said something a couple weeks ago, and uh, I think maybe a couple people caught it, but it's a thought I've been thinking about often. When we struggle to not recognize the power that has been given to us, we are leaving Christ in the grave, spiritually. Bottom line, he has been risen from the grave. And if he has been risen from the grave, Last I checked, last time I got out of bed, my head got out of the bed, my body came out with it. So if the head of the church was resurrected from the grave and only the clothes are in there according to the scripture, that means that we got resurrected from the grave. Then that means I have all power and authority to overcome the wicked one. But do we believe it? Do you believe it? We talked about a, a, a testimony of Brother Bernie, Bernie recently. How did that happen? Hmm. I'll tell you right now what happened. The devil suffered losses because somebody finally realized that, wow, I have the power to actually make proper decisions in my life. I can actually hold to the word of God and trust his promises. When we don't trust his promises, by the way, if you don't trust one of God's promises, what, you just get to pick and choose scripture? That does not work that way with God. He defeated the grave. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Listen, we have to cling to that. We have all the power and authority to overcome anything. Last week, Brother Don, Dan also talked about conferring of authority. That was in chapter 3. That means the bestowing authority or giving us the authority. It has been given to us. That's a gift. 
by the grace of God, thou shalt be saved. We can be saved. And by the way, that's not just a salvation passage. Yeah, we're quick to bust it out when we're trying to lead people to the Lord, and we should. But don't just leave that in, in your purse or in your wallet, and don't come back to that track in your sanctified life, because every single day we need the grace of God to be able to overcome this daily battle called life, the world, the devil, temptation, blah, blah. I can go on and on and on. We need it all the time, and the authority has been given to us to overcome. All the mighty power that God demonstrated in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the conferring authority, um, all the mighty power that God demonstrated in the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the same power we possess today. Christ was the head and he was raised, and we as the body came with it. You know, the stone was not rolled away so Christ could get out. The stone was rolled away for us unbelieving eyes to believe that he is not in there. Amen. That's the truth. Just thank you, Lord, for the work you did on Calvary, the greatest act of love ever. But the cross is nothing without the grave. The cross is nothing without the grave. I gave you guys my testimony when I was in Israel, and the, the moment I had when I saw Calvary didn't even touch what happened when I actually stepped into the tomb. And I felt this is where my Jesus won the battle. Bottom line. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Well, believe it, because it's true. The Bible tells me so. Okay, now let's segue into chapter 4. Where is this authority located? The location of this authority. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the work of his mighty power? We say that I just don't uh, know if I will ever get over these stubborn habits. We can say those kind of things. And I know for years there's been stubborn habits in my life where I literally was just like, <laughs> I guess it's just the way it's going to be, huh? No, that is not the attitude. You know, it could be a bad temper, it could be bitterness, it could be lustful thoughts, it could, we can go on down the, on the whole entire line. But if you notice, here in this portion of Scripture, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is actually praying. This is a prayer that Paul is praying to the people. And he's, uh, he, he's, he's not praying, Lord, um, uh, give them power over sin. That's not the prayer here in Ephesians chapter 1. The actual prayer is, Lord, give them vision to see the power they already have. This isn't about, hey, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they'll figure it out. No, 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 no. They've already got it. Lord, have them have the vision. Have them to hold tight to the, what they already have, that power that's already been given to them. The power of the resurrection. And where is it located? It's located right there in the tomb where Christ defeated the grave. That is where the power lied, and that power has been given to us. That is the location of where we got it. Verse 20 says, Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. The right hand of God in heavenly places. As we talk about this, this location. You ever heard of the right hand man? That's my right hand man. This is where this authority is at. Christ. Resurrected sat at the right hand of the Lord uh, of God, and yet us, saved individuals that have trusted in Christ and asked for him to be the Lord, the master, come into our heart, we are also seated in heavenly places right now. We have that authority placed on us. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. <laughs> How does that work? I'm here right now. Maybe physically, but eternally and spiritually, we are right now seated with him in heavenly places because he lives inside of us and we have all that power that's been bestowed on us. But God created those things, right? You know, we, uh, God created the things of, uh, you know, we see babies born, we see sunsets, we see all these things and we go, wow, you know, God, you're such a great God and what, what great um, things that you have created. Well, that same God that created you and I, created everything we see, one day we were going to stand before in heavenly places. In heavenly places. I don't know about you, but I still have a hard time wrapping my head around that idea. But the Bible tells me that I'm going to be with him. I'm, be, I'm seated with him. I'm sealed with him. Well, so are you. Well, where else is this authority located? 
Well, the Bible tells us, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So where did he raise him? Well, it says far above, far above. Now, I was a sports kid growing up. Uh, my family was a Nebraska Cornhusker family. Uh, That's where my, my dad's from and then my family. My brother went to school there. Bottom line is we're Cornhuskers. And uh, what a great time as a kid. It's not funny, Trina. What, what a great time as a kid to be a, a sports fan of the Nebraska Cornhuskers because from when the time I was born to the time I was 20-something years old, they never lost. Uh, I would watch them play every Saturday, and I'd watch my dad just go crazy at the phone, and all the family would come over, and it was a big old deal, and they'd always win by 30 points, 40 points, 50 mm -hmm. points. They would just kill people. I mean, just over and over again. It was just dominance, dominance, dominance. Why? Because they were far above mm -hmm. their competition. They had a better program. They had a better coach. They had uh, strength. They, had, they, they were diligent. They were disciplined. Uh, everybody in Nebraska had nothing better to do than to play football for them. So they had they had what they called a black shirts team. So they're like their JV was big enough to where they would travel around and go whoop on teams too. These people were good. I mean, it was a great team, far above the competition. Well, that doesn't even come anywhere close to what we're talking about here. The Bible says far above what? Well, it says to us, verse twenty one principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. You know, all these words that are being described here, principalities, powers, might, dominion, these are all dealing with the angelic beings. That's what it's all talking about here. And our Jesus, according to the scripture, and by the way, he defeated the grave, and by the way, we have the same power that's been bestowed to us, um, tells us that he's above it. But not just above it, far above it. You know, <clears throat> we just simply don't utilize the power that has been given to us. A firestorm comes, and we're quick to shut off the power lines. It's kind of like the state of California. When the fires start going, they just shut off all the power. Not with our Jesus. When the fires start coming is when we hold on to the power. Because we have the power when the light, when times and turmoils come, you know, we say things in our life like, I'm addicted. And God says, no, 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 you're free. I can free you from that. We, we run to God and, uh, or we run to, to different, different things. We say, I need a counselor. Or I, need, I need medicine. I need a program. God just says simply, you have me. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't go to counselors or to programs, but if they're, if they're, if they're totally and completely centered on the word of God and preaching his power, his resurrection and what he can do for us. If well, let's put it this way: if it's not according to the Bible, it's denying the power thereof. That's what the Bible tells us in Second Timothy. There's many forms of godliness out there, small g, that deny the power of the resurrection. Oh yes, you might get a relief for a season, for a moment, but at the end of the day, you are denying the power thereof if we don't truly believe that all the power lies within the resurrection of what Jesus Christ did for us. The greatest act of power that's ever taken place. Well, you're probably looking at me and going, well, Brother Mike, all this really sounds great, great theology, uh, but, I mean, come on, let's get into the practicality of all this, right? Because I'm, I'm a practical guy, I think. Uh, I like to hear big, big old things in the Bible, but at the end of the day, if I can't walk out of here with something to use it, then what's the whole point of this? We're in Sunday school here. Let's learn something, right? Well, stay with me. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, the Bible says, And he hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So now we get this, this descriptive illustration of under his feet, this picture of complete dominance is what it is. So what is under his feet? Well, the Bible tells us. <clears throat> He's the head over all things of the church. So what's under his feet? It's the, the powers, it's dominion, it's everything we saw from verse 21. Um, he has power over, uh, over addictions, over lusts, over gossip, over doubt, depression, meanness, sadness, laziness. You name it, he has power over it. But you don't understand. My problems are much bigger than that. Or I know somebody that has problems much bigger than that. We can go ahead and say those kind of things. Well, do you guys remember 
in the story when Jesus is walking across the water when there was a storm. And in Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, um, we see the story of the waves that were crashing on the disciples. And do you remember who walked on those, those waves when it was contrary winds? But the ship was not, was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And do you remember what the what the disciples said? Oh man, is, is that a is that a spirit? Small s. Is that a spirit? And they cried out in fear. Now let's just think about it for a second. How often is that us? Waves are coming. Christ is above it all. Remember, he walked on the water. He's above it all. He's on top of the waves. Life is coming. Waves are crashing. We're sitting there going, oh, oh, oh. And we get stuck in fear. Oh, man, what's going to happen next? What are we going to do? What's going to happen? Where are we going to go? But what did Christ, what was his response? Be of good cheer. Be not afraid. Real simple. You know, Jesus is in absolute control of every single one of our situations. Financial, physical, emotional, spiritual, you name it. He's in absolute control of every one. And the very obstacle that's going to drown you is exactly the place in which he wants to meet you. There was a reason why he waited on the shore and sent them out and a storm came. There was an absolute reason. And he walked above the water. Why? Because he knows that sometimes we're going to try to sink. And he's just wondering, are you going to reach for me so I can reach to you? In other words, are you going to truly believe in my power over all of this garbage, all these things that are weighing you down? Or when are you just going to look up, stretch your hand forward so I can pluck you up and put you on the same level as me? Because by the way, I'm far above, far above principalities, powers, gossip, blah, 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 anxiety, all of it. I'm far above. Sometimes we have to sink a little bit just to see exactly how much power is really in that grave. I know for me, oh man, I, I tell the story, I tell my, my, when I sometimes tell my testimony about different things, some of the biggest strongholds of my life, I truly actually don't even remember the day I got victory. Because you know what, for the longest time, I would try to swim through those waves and swim through those waves on all my strength and all my might, and every time it would choke me out and I'd drown and I'd float to the bottom. But when I started to just believe in the Lord, start being obedient to simple things like, don't do this. Maybe you should do that. Um, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Hey, listen to authority. Hey, if you're, you know, <laughs> you know, just like simple practicality things. Just start believing what it says. When I started to do that, then all of a sudden I'd look back and go, man, it's been like a year since I've even dealt with that. Or what, I mean, I could go on and on with all those kind of things. Why? Well, because one day, for my own personal salvation message, is that, you know what? I finally just believed his hand was stretched forth, so I reached up for it. Now, with that said, I'm still reaching. Because there's more waves coming. I think there was a tsunami warning in L.A. yesterday, wasn't there? <laughs> Today? Well, I can't tell you how many tsunami warnings are in the life of Mr. Brother Mike Knox. <laughs> Oftentimes, in the... When I'm least expecting it, oh boy, the, the bells and whistles are going off. Lord, reach me up and pluck me up so I can be far above that also. Yeah. Now, this may sound all simple, but we've got to be thinking this in our head. You know, um, you, got, you guys know when you guys ever played baseball or softball or something like that. And I remember I had a coach when I was young. And I wasn't a very good baseball player. I could throw the ball, but I couldn't hit the ball to save my life. You know what my, my, my coach used to tell me? Just grab the ball, I grab the bat, grip it, and rip it. In other words, you know what? Maybe you're not very good at this. But you know what? You got the tool to smack that ball. We got the tool to smack that devil. Let's just grip it and rip it, man. Let's just believe in what it says. We may not have it all figured out. Praise God for the church and the body and authority that's been placed around us to help coddle us back into line when we got to get back into line. I thank you, Lord, for wives. I thank you for friends. I thank you for pastors. I thank you for men of God. Quick testimony. I remember it was about 2016, 2015, I think. Uh, one more time, I had just made a mess of things. 
I found myself going to a restoration ministry. Uh, I get there the very first night, and I'm over in the corner listening to the preaching. I'm crying and whimpering, and I made a mess of everything again. And this guy comes over to me. His name's Dennis. Big old tall guy, surfer dude. Got hair down to here. He's a uh, lives in a, he's a construction guy out in um, in uh, Costa Mesa. Faithful to the church. He's been coming for 15, 20 years. He got victory over some bad habits back in the 80s or something like that and just sold out for Jesus. And now he just goes around and he tries to encourage people. He's got big ministries down south, he takes care of uh, orphans. And he just travels around the world and encourages people. It just so happened that night he was preaching. Well, I'm sitting there just, just sniveling, sniveling. I made a mess of things again. I made a mess of things again. And he comes over and goes, what's your name? I said, oh, Mike. And he's like, what's going on? And I just laid out like how I got the raw end of the deal. You know, like, oh, and this and this. And he goes, you know what he goes? He, goes, he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> and this is how he talks. You know what, bro? You know what your problem is? You're a poser. I was like, what? <laughs> Because you talk this big old spiritual game, but you don't believe it. When are you going to stop believing in God and stand up and start fighting? That's literally what this man said to me. I'm a big tough guy. I was like, you're right. You're right. That man was at my wedding three years later. Him and his wife. That man ministered to me. I thank you, Lord, for that man standing up to me and saying, you know what? Grow up. The reason why you're such a a weak little baby is because you want to be a weak little baby. Grow up. Grip it and rip it, man. We only got one shot at this. And it's but, but a vapor. I'm 44 years old. I'm already halfway through my vapor. What's that mean? Not much time to go. Grip it and rip it. Let's go. We got authority. It's been bestowed to us. We're far above. We got defeating of the grave. It's been bestowed to us. We got no excuse here, guys. Let's just go after it. Poser, he calls me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for Brother Dennis. <clears throat> Ephesians 1.23. Let's uh, wrap this up here pretty quick. The Bible goes on to tell us, which is his body. End of the chapter here in Ephesians chapter 1 which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church, we are the body. And guys, we got to stick together. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, it was customary for my family to eat dinner together. We, we, were, we were somewhat conservative in that direction. And I don't remember ever a time, all of us kids sitting around the table, typically dad, my, my, my dad cooked too, but typically dad be there. And my dad was the kind of dad, how was your day? What did you learn? Tell me about what happened. My mom would usually wait to serve, and she would usually sit down last. Just that was the kind of family I was in. That's We didn't know anything else. It would have been really weird if we'd all been sitting at the table. My mom would have brought a plate to everybody and said, now go to your guys' rooms and eat by yourself. How often do we do that with the church? Weird to be in unity. Weird to be circled with one another. We are to try to be finding a way to submit ourselves one to another. We're trying to figure out ways where we can always draw closer. But so often, we'll grab our plate and go and do our own thing. Now, can you survive on your own? Yeah. But the fullness thereof? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. There's nothing about accountability. There's nothing about edification. You know, the Bible tells us, Forsaking not the assembly, all the, day, all the more as the day approaches. And that whole portion of scripture right there is not about an attendance record. It's all about exhorting one another. Yeah. Now, granted, we got to be here to exhort each other. So I don't want to, don't, 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 don't sit here and say that Brother Knox is saying don't go to church. No. But what's the reasoning we're there? What's the reasoning? What's our motive? Is our motive because just maybe today I can encourage somebody? Or maybe today, I need to be encouraged. I'm empty, Lord. I don't have fullness. And I don't know about you guys, but I try to pick out people in my life that are just have the gift of encouragement. I'm not trying to put something in the spot, but Brother Brent is that one. Brother Brent and I met a few years back, and just when we met, I like this guy. He encouraged me. 
I have a handful of people in my life where I'm quick to send a text message out or something, or maybe go to see them and shake their hand, and just for some reason, their countenance alone always puts a smile on my face. It makes me feel full. Full. But you know what? If I don't reach out, if I grab my plate and I go to my bedroom and I go lay and try to eat on my own, I don't get that. Will I get fed? Will I die of starvation? Well, maybe not physically. But spiritually, I will diminish. We were not created to be on our own. There is no rogue Christian. Don't tell me that. There is not rogue Christianity. It is not so. Now, granted, we have some people that maybe can't get around as much as others. Hey, out of church is not out of touch. I love that saying that Brother, uh, Pastor Fisher gave us about a year ago here at the church. Out of, you know, we have a responsibility then. We're never bothering people to try to love on people. <clears throat> the intimacy of the body together as we seek and search the Lord together is a special, practical way for us to help each other, to encourage each other. And you know, when somebody calls you, I'm a pretty blunt guy. When people call me, I do a dentist often in their lives. Hey, listen, you got this, man. Why? What do you mean? You don't understand how bad it is. No, but I understand how good my God is. Do you not believe what he did for you? What he's doing for us? What's going on? It's really okay to edify people like that. Christ did it all the time. Men of God and the word of God always edify. And it wasn't by prancing around it. We don't need to prance around this, guys. We're in a battle. The devil is real. He is like a lion. He's like unto. He's not really one. He's a big old teddy bear with fangs. And those things aren't even real. Now, we make him try to be real. We, you know, we're, we're typically people that like to pole vault over anthills. I know that I typically have done that often in my life. You know, really. Make a big deal out of nothing. Because the devil wants to magnify and amplify. All that junk up. It's smoke and mirrors, man. But you know what I need sometimes is somebody to tell me, praise God for a wife, often tells me, uh, actually, that's not really that big a deal. <laughs> what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It really isn't that big a deal. <laughs> and sometimes we get to help out others. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. Let's just conclude it with uh, this last little application of charge. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up <clears throat> together, made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And don't miss that in verse 5. And in verse 6, that word together is said three times. There's a unity. We have a bond. There's a team here. We are on team Jesus. We are together. He raises us to sit with him so that we can share of the trophy of his grace. And new slash, this is not just for a select few. This is for all of it, everybody. This is, this is not uh, only first string gets a piece. No, 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 no. We're all on the team. and We all can partake of it. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Now that we understand that we have this power, now we understand where it's located, what is the call to action? Here we go. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. By the way, we will get the piece and get a part of that. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We have a responsibility to go out and tell people about this. One of the biggest reasons why the devil gets so many victories. Remember, suicide. Overdose. I mean, on the, the numbers are staggering right now. Staggering. I mean, we're talking 30% up on all these things. 892 babies were killed last year. 892,000, I'm sorry. I mean, these are staggering numbers. Lies that are being fed to people. 
which is unbelievable. We have a responsibility to go out and tell people of all the power and authority that has been bestowed to us, where that authority is, how it happened. We need to get people this information because this is the lie that the devil does not want to be seen. His, his clock's ticking. He already knows, oh man, I've only got so much more time to run around here and fake people out. I've only got so much time and then my time's going to be up and I'm going to be cast to utter darkness. So I'm going to try to make a mix of all this as I can. And you know what? We'll sit here and go, oh man, let's just preserve ourselves. Me, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, but what about, let's talk to the neighbors about this. Hey, by the way, we got some defeating going on over here. Hey, hey, let me show you in the word of God that you have the power to overcome this thing. Whatever it be. Let's encourage one another. Let's be, we can be transparent with one another. I'm not saying confession Sunday, nuh-uh. But what I am saying is if you can befriend a friend, uh, somebody and bestow into them a personal relationship, hey, you know what? Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? I need some help with this. I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. Is it not okay, Baptist, to say that we're struggling? <laughs> I mean, do we have it all figured out? I don't. If you've got it figured out, then meet me after this and tell me. I need help. I need edification. I like a simple text message praying for you, brother. Thank you. I need it. I mean, I'd be lost without this building. I'd be lost without y'all. I wouldn't know what to do. This is, you guys are part of the covering. You're part of the covering. We're the church. And the beautiful part is he's the head. He's over it all. Far above. Far above. I love that. Far above. Just in passing. And the stars also. <laughs> yeah. Don't miss those kind of two words. Far above. But God. But God. Come on. In all of our lives. We have been made to sit with him. We also get to partake in his authority. We have been resurrected with him. <clears throat> and we have been resurrected with him. <clears throat> and to exercise his authority over powers of the air and over the conditions of this fallen world. Satan wants to deceive you and spiritually bankrupt you <clears throat> and me, but God has raised us to sit in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word. We cling to these promises. We cling to them. Your word says it. That settles it. Lord, help us to be uh, edifiers one to another and to be encouragers of one another. And for those of you that are uh, on an upward swing and maybe got some victories, let's tell others about it also so they can also witness and be a part of the power of your resurrection. Help us, Lord. Help us to not be quiet quiet, reserved people that don't want to talk about all your goodness. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to come here. We're praying for the service that's coming, praying for the music, to be edifying and to, to soften our hearts. And we must come in with, a, with an attitude of praise and how good you are. We're praying for the message. Pray for the message giver. Pray that it it, it, it receives to a, a receiving heart, not a hard heart. Pray for all those that can't be with us, those that are home. Have them to be in spirit with us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Praying for our pastor, praying for our preacher. Thank you for him. Thank you for the work you're doing in him. And again, Lord, we're praying for your word to continue to enter his mind. Because we know that that is, at the end of the day, what we all need. Lord, we love you again. We praise you. Be with us the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, I think there's still some treats back there as people get ready to shuffle off to their ministries. Thank you for all your guys' service. For those of you who are going to be working with all, all the different avenues today. Amen. We get to go to church now.